So we'll start, okay, with the some basic ideas on economics, some basic terms relating to economics, and then next class may we can move on to the first chapter that is fiscal policy. Okay, so give the heading economics. Okay, introduction in that we will be discussing. So what is economics? So it is nothing but the study of the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. It can be from individual point of view. It can be from the household point of view. It can be from the corporate point of view, or it can be from the national nation or country's point of view. So we can study about production, distribution, and consumption. Now let's let me give you an idea what 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 basically this is. If we take for example a farmer, what will we grow? He will take certain economic decisions as to what to grow. Right? How is he making that decision? What to grow? So he will keep in mind profits. I will grow rice because it will give me profit. I will grow mangoes because it's going to give me profit. Will he grow something which does not give him profit? No, no. So what is he going to produce? Production. Okay. How is he going to distribute or how is he going to sell it? Who is going to take care of it? And who is the ultimate? Consumers. So the study of all of this is economics. Even a company, what, how do they take economic decisions relating to production? How do they take economic with respect to distribution or whom they are focusing on consumption? So all that is studied in economics. So basically economy is the study of production, distribution and consumption of goods and services. It can be studied from the individual, household, corporate, nation, nation's point of view. So the basic idea is that resources limited Okay, then wants or needs are unlimited. Yes or no? Our needs are unlimited. Resources are limited. So we need to take economic decisions to meet that want or concern. So that's the scope of economics. So how to utilize limited resources to meet unlimited wants, needs. That is the scope of economy. What is the scope of economy? It is to study how limited resources can be used to meet wants and needs of the people. So that is what is economics. If you have to define economics, this is what is economy. A company also the ultimate aim of the company is to use its resources to fulfill its needs. Its needs is to make profit. So that is the scope of economics. Is that okay? So economy has two sub discipline or it has got sub branches. Economy has two sub branches, microeconomics and macroeconomics. So microeconomics deals with this economic behavior or decisions at an individual unit, single unit, when they try to study the production, distribution and consumption of a single unit, that is microeconomics. When you are trying to study economy as a whole of the nation, that is known as macroeconomics. Did you understand? Microeconomics, studying the economic behavior of an individual unit. Whereas macroeconomics deals with the study of economy as a whole. So that's the definition, microeconomics, study of economic behavior of the particular individual or a firm or a household. That means it studies a particular unit. It will take your family and it will study your family, how they are taking decision, whether they are decided to buy a house buy a car or spend it on vacation. How are they making those decisions? What is motivating them to make those decisions? 
if it is a farmer how is he selecting which crop to grow what price is he going to sell where is he selling if they are studying individual farmers or farmer group individual farmer group then it is micro economics if they are studying the whole economy of the country aggregate of the entire country like what is the inflation in our country what is the poverty level in our country what is the unemployment see unemployment may be 20% as a whole so that is all studied under macro so it studies the economy as a whole that is not as a single unit but a combination of all of them okay does not stick to one household now inflation means inflation affects everybody is it affecting only one person or everybody everybody right so that is what is macro economics right so the difference you can put a column and write the difference right so micro economics studies behavior of individual consumer firm or family or in other words it studies single unit yes it studies single unit whereas macro economics studies the behavior of the whole economy so micro economics it deals with individual economic variables like demand and supply that means why a family demands something or how do they supply farmers supply the pricing why would a farmer sell it at 10 rupees or 20 rupees or 30 rupees factor pricing what are the factors affecting the prices of a particular commodity not the aggregate particular production consumption welfare etc whereas here it takes into account aggregate variables aggregate means when everything is put together aggregate aggregate variables like national income like gdp general price level that is inflation index inflation index something called as cpi we'll discuss all that later but consumer price index is an example employment level money supply etc importance helpful in determining the prices of products okay within the economy here it is useful to study so as to bring about stability in the economy so maintain stability in general price level and resolves major problems like inflation deflation reflation etc okay so that's about economics so economics deals with production distribution and consumption of goods and services to uh, division within economics micro and macro micro deals with single unit macro deals with the entire nation or as a whole aggregate of everything individual level individual decision making economic decision making see when i am stressing on economic decision making should be able to appreciate that all of us in our life we take decisions based on economic criteria okay what to eat when to eat okay can i afford it right so all those are the economic decisions if you are a producer of something manufacturer farmer you again take economic decision on a regular basis what to grow how much to invest right so all those are economic decisions if you study the economic decisions of a single unit micro economics if you try to study the economic behaviors of the whole nation or rather the economic activity of production distribution of consumption of the whole nation then it is macro economics next coming to the types of economy so based on who takes these decisions based on who takes these decisions of production distribution and consumption we have different types of economy in the world economy of the world can be divided into different types based on who takes this decision of production distribution and consumption or who controls them okay so we can either classify traditional i've just mentioned it but otherwise it can be a free market economy it can be a command economy or it can be a mixed economy 
okay that's one way of classifying the economies of the world so now when we say traditional economy it was in the past before the formal modern economic system evolved in the past matlab in our ancient times how was economy economy was traditional in the sense that it was based on the kinship network it was based on kinship network okay so those who are close relatives we do trade with them friends we do trade with them okay so that kind of economic relationship was called as traditional economy so you had the temple or you had the church or you had a chief everybody because of their loyalty because of their love or because of their um, you know belief system they used to go and grow whatever they grow they used to go and give it as tribute to the king the chief the temple or the church then the church would then distribute to others temple would do or the king would do so it was based on kinship network is that okay even today we have this traditional economy like okay you go to your friend's wedding you give 100 rupees in the envelope your friend writes on okay he gave 100 rupees in your wedding they'll give you 100 rupees you go to a very close relative you'll give give 500 rupees someone you don't know you'll just go hi hi you'll give blank envelope and come off <laughs> right so that's your traditional economy which is not regulated by the government or any leave that so it's not necessary from my exam point of view just an idea that traditional economy was based on the kinship network where people used to exchange goods between friends and family then based on as i told you who takes these decisions of production distribution and consumption economy can be classified into free market command and mixed economy okay so free market economy is where production distribution and consumption is decided by the market forces is decided by the market forces on the basis of demand and supply with the intention to maximize one's profit this is what is known as free market economy free for all you take economic decision you decide what to produce you decide how distribution consumer consumption will be based on their ability to purchase government will not do anything you can purchase you buy you don't purchase you starve that's your problem that is free market economy where market forces decides the production distribution and consumption did you understand so consumption will be based on who can pay okay somebody who can't pay will not get it somebody uh, is able to pay they will distribute it to them if they are able to make profit they will produce it otherwise they will not like buses buses will go to village if there is people traveling otherwise no bus to that village that is your pre market ultimate aim is what profit okay but command economy is opposite where the decisions to produce distribute and consumption is in the hands of the government any government it can be dictatorial government ours is democratic it can be kings so whoever the government decides what to produce distribute and consume okay and this is not based on demand and supply its ultimate aim is welfare at least theoretically it is for the welfare of the people what to produce what to distribute. see for example even in india if you didn't know there are certain pieces of land where only rice paddy can be grown this law has been made by our government so that farmers have to grow rice otherwise what will happen they will not grow food crops and they will grow cash crops which is more profitable this was done during after our independence when we had shortage of food we wanted our farmers to grow only food not other crops so there are land in karnataka also there are lands which are reserved for cultivation of only paddy they cannot grow anything 
else they have to grow paddy why so that food security will be achieved so that means who is controlling production government this is an example of command economy but us is not completely command but i just gave you an example that government will tell people you do this you have no choice you like i will today i will open a restaurant tomorrow i will open a something else but in command economy it's not like that government will decide what you are supposed to do like india before 90s was like that if you want to open an industry there will be only limited licenses government will say you apply for license if you get you can open today there is no license and all to opening industries except few you have money you want to waste your money or you want to make profit that's up to you you open industry you don't want to open industry that's up to you you understood so the government will decide what to produce distribute and consume in a command even consumption is decided by the government so government will not allow people to buy whatever they want in a command economy government will tell you have access to only to 5 kg rice they will give you a ration card and tell you you are eligible only for 5 kg rice this used to happen even in india uh, not to such a rigid extent but in ussr and other countries socialistic countries they used to tell people that you can buy 5 kg rice 1 kg sugar like that so even consumption was controlled okay even if you have money you can't buy that was the situation in command economy you understood all of you. even distribution was by government government will have its own public distribution system through which it will distribute so it was based on the necessity what people want that they used to give not greedy okay so that is a command but country like india is a mixed economy combination of both meaning free market also is allowed to function at the same time government also is involved in production distribution and consumption however today this is reducing government's role in economy is reducing see for example we have public sector unit psus why are the psu set up psus were there even in consumer goods you believe it or not toothpastes all those were manufactured by government also slowly we have started to private cars were manufactured scooters were manufactured by government production was made by the government but now we have mixed you have government manufactured also you have private now soaps for example you have mysore sandal soap manufactured by the government and then you have lux and other things whatever which is manufactured by private a combination of both okay so that is mixed economy you have private buses which are traveling everywhere you have public buses to make profit also to help get access to remote areas where private will not go agreed all of you so this is mixed economy a combination of both okay next next way of classifying economy is open and closed economy the next another way to classify economy is mixed or closed economy ah uh, sorry uh, open and closed economy so when we say open economy when we say open economy there is flow of as i told you earlier flow of foreign currency goods and services and so if somebody some indian wants to invest abroad they can do so when a foreigner wants to invest in india they can do so there is no restriction that's an example of open economy but it's not so easy also there are certain restriction complete prohibition of this is closed economy an open economy allows flow of foreign currency exchange of goods and services and movement of people an open economy is that okay closed economy where there is restriction on flow of foreign currency goods and services and people okay so that is what is known as closed economy but uh, in a practical scenario we do not have completely open economy 
or completely closed i mean closed so we don't have only because no country can survive if it is a closed economy because it has to it it will always be dependent on something or the other from outsiders you can call north korea as a closed economy to a large extent because it has got very limited trade relation with outsiders only few like china and all do trade with north korea okay uh, open economy free open economy where there is easy movement we don't find again practically we don't have a country which can claim that they are open economy there's always going to be a barrier like tax barriers visa for movement of people like us you will say oh it's open no it's not us also has limited visa it also has tariff barriers for goods and services so no country will have completely free open economy there is always going to be restriction is that okay open and closed india is an open economy to a large extent in the 90s we started opening up much more allowing investors to come to india today we have liberalized even more but still there is lot of restriction we'll discuss that when we do external sector the last another way of classifying economy of the world is capitalist and socialist economy when we say capitalist economy here the modes of production distribution and consumption or rather the resources sorry is owned by private ownership is private that is called as capitalist economy when the resources are owned by private whereas in socialist economy where the national resources are owned by the government public all of you understood so capitalist and socialist so india is again a mixed economy here also we are neither capitalist nor fully socialist ours again is a mixed economy okay so we have socialist economic policies in order to promote welfare to eliminate poverty to create employment we have socialist economy <coughs> see for example psu public sector units <coughs> so these public sector units are owned by the government why is it owned by the government for various reasons for uh regional to reduce regional imbalance to create employment to make uh goods or services accessible to all for example we have public sector units to ensure regional imbalance is less okay like for example bsnl you might be telling oh bsnl no network no network but bsnl is the only thing that is available in rural areas is that okay so that's that's the reason so that is why we have socialist economy so private aimed at profit government aimed at promoting regional imbalance i mean regional balance and welfare and things like that. is that okay guys so these are the different types of economy so what is economy micro macro economics and the different types of economy okay capitalist this one i mean just one one line on that is important in case if they ask in the examination is that okay guys next <clears throat>